Hello, welcome. This is another playlist that I'm going to be going through, and we're going to be covering the ASHRAE change point models. And that's a very vague term right now, and if you don't know what ASHRAE stands for, it's the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers. There's one of the longer acronyms you'll see in engineering. But what I'm going to be going over is the sequence of models that are very, very useful for predicting whole building energy use on daily and higher time scales, daily and monthly typically. And they're specifically mentioned in a document called the ASHRAE Guideline 14. which describes M and V procedures. M standing for monitoring and V for verification. And we'll get into that later. But what I want to do is give you the general sense of where these come from and why they're useful. So I, I guess the best way to begin is to start by drawing some plots. And let's, we're gonna make outdoor air temperature our x-axis and we're gonna plot energy on this axis and let's say this is a large building and we're talking about the amount of heating that this building uses or amount of natural gas that they're consuming and if you would take we're gonna say per month this is energy use per month right? so this is you know, MMBTU of natural gas that we're using. If you would plot this many times, more often than not, you would get something shaped like this. And this shape is very common. It sort of looks like a hockey stick, where at some point this section over here is flat, and then over here, there's some sort of slope to it. And if you want to be more particular about it, this section here is independent of the outdoor air temperature, and this section is dependent on the outdoor air temperature. It's a function of outdoor air temperature. Really, this whole this whole plot is a function of outdoor air temperature, and that's what we're really going to model. And and why is why does something like this look like this? Well. At, at some temperature, so let's just start at this end, when it's very, very cold. When The colder it gets, as you'd expect, the more heating energy you'll need to keep your home or building at the temperature you need it. And at a very high temperature, say 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you don't really need natural gas for heating, but you're always using some some level of natural gas for your dishwashers, your hot water coming out of your sink, etc., etc. Anything like this. Where these things, you're going to use your dishwasher in the summertime and in the wintertime, the same amount. You're going to need to wash your hands the same amount that is regardless of temperature. And so you still have some, this is non zero, this is not a line on the x axis, there are some baseline energy use and there's some there's something here that's temperature dependent this is HVAC related and so what people have done is they've noticed okay we we have this shape all the time we have some baseline use and we also have some temperature dependent use and it's sometimes linear and things that are linear are oftentimes really nice for modeling. So the usefulness of a model is to say, okay, I the next month is predicted to be at this temperature, this new temperature. And if I had a model based on previous experience, I could probably tell you, okay, I predict that you will use this much this much energy this month because I have this model. And that's very, very useful. So this is linear, but this model is 
change point linear. We call this this kink in the hockey stick. This is the change point. And this temperature here, we'll put T sub CP for change point temperature. This is the, also some people would call this a, a balance temperature. Where this is where the building is in balance, where we're not needing any HVAC related energy use because the temperature just isn't at a point where you need to do that. You just have non temperature related loads in the building. So one might ask the next question, how what is an equation that that will give me this output? Okay? If I just have y equals mx plus b, if I do a standard regression and I ran that, I would have gotten something like this. That's not useful. That doesn't capture this change point linear shape. So how what what style of equation are we going to have? Well, there's a couple ways to write it. And we'll try and show you some of the intuition. You could, you could basically discretize this and say, okay, I'm going to say my energy is going to be one of two equations. So if T, it's a function of outdoor air temperature, and let's say if the outdoor temperature is less than my change point, then what do I get? E, e is going to be, it's going to be in this slope section, and it's going to be a standard line. So we're going to have some, we'll, we'll use M for slope right now, M, and we'll, we'll, we'll just put TOA in here for now, okay? Plus some constant, because this is a, this is a straight line, equation of a line. And if T OA is greater than the change point, maybe we'll make one of these equal. So we're over the entire range of the reals. We'll just say that this is some, some energy use baseline. Or we'll just call it another constant. We'll call it constant. Uh, we'll use the letter C. So any of these make sense. But this is kind of gaudy. Okay, and you you would really have to do some interesting things to make this work. So, oh goodness, I realized that I didn't show you all what I, what I was writing, but but this is what I was writing from what I was describing. But well, you didn't see it, but this is kind of verbose to explain this shape. So. What some people have done is they've invented some nomenclature, and I'm going to write it down and explain it later. We're going to say that that function is equal to some constant plus another coefficient this is this is our new formula right here. So, E is a function of your outdoor air temperature. This is the independent variable. And the rest of these are found, usually. So, first question you might have is, well, what is, what is, this, what is this plus? And why are we doing a subtraction here? And well, how is this one equation going to describe this whole thing? Well, let's, let's, let's explain. First... This, this nomenclature is a real nifty thing. It's, it's also called the ramp function. But all this plus means is that you take what's in this parentheses, you evaluate this, you do the subtraction. If this value is positive, you take it as is. If it's negative, you make whatever it's zero. So. Whatever's in, if whatever's in the parentheses is positive, you get out that positive value. If that value in the parentheses is negative, you get zero. So what does that really look like if you would plot this out? It's called the ramp function because if your x-axis is what's inside the parentheses, what you get out is this, or 
this is a slope of 1. And really, this is the ramp function. And so this is a useful exercise to say, OK, if it's negative, it's 0. If it's positive, it's what it is. Now, let's just put in a sample value. Let's say we have a temperature that is much higher than the, the change point temperature. What do we get out of this equation? Well, if this number is greater than this number, this, this will be negative, and this whole term, I'm not going to draw through it all right now, but that would all go to 0, and all you'd be left with is a constant. And so this A in this formula, this would relate to this height. This would be your coefficient A. Okay? And T's change point is this same value that we have here. Now, let's say that we have a, a temperature that's cold, or it's lower than this change point. Now it's positive. Well, this B slope is really, it's really this slope right here. And to know how much slope you need to go up, you are looking at the difference. Let's say instead of T nu, this is just the T input we put into that formula. That's this right here. The height difference you get, this new height difference, that's related to how far away you are from this change point and the slope multiplied together, and that gives you that height. So I know this plot's gotten messy, and we'll be going over this in a little more detail later, but this is that constant portion, and this gives you that extra height related to some slope. And that's it. And we come up with a special name for this formula. We call this formula a 3P model, where the P stands for parameters. And can you count them? There's three of them here. The three parameters for this model are A, B, and this change point. If you have those three things, you have now defined this function, this curve, this linear change point model. And so this is just one of several different forms that we're going to go over, but they're going to have very similar names. We're going to have 2P, 1Ps, 3Ps. 3Ps are going to come in two different flavors, heating and cooling. 4P, 5P, and then to infinity and beyond, no, but usually stop at five parameters. And we'll see why when we get that in the upcoming videos.